So we're going to have a look at the uh, solver settings now. Um, I'm just going to disconnect the collider. So I just have to unclick like that. Just so we don't need to see it at the moment. Um, and one of the good things about this sort of workflow is obviously you can just, you know, connect and connect. Don't have to worry about in the sort of previous world of Bifrost where it was all over here and it was all a bit messy. You can sort of see exactly what's connecting on there, which is really good. Um, so I'm just going to hide the torus. So let's have a look at the solver settings. Um, right, so enable, this is the master where we can turn the solver on and off. Uh, we can set a master start frame. Let me just do that so we can read it properly. Um, and we can ask if we want to store mass density, which um, I've not done yet. Uh, what does it do? Enables the computation of mass density of a flow which is stored in a voxel basin. So we're on an arrow. It's only necessary to enable this if the mass density is being used for post processing or rendering. It does not affect the simulation itself. There we go. Um, right, so let's have a look at the globals. So we've got ambient temperature, which we had a quick look at before, but that's basically the temperature of the air everywhere. Um, temperature diffusion, I think that's how much temperature will dissipate into that air. Double check that. Controls the spread of heating to nearby voxels. The diffusion heats up the surrounding air, unlike radiative heating on the combustion settings. Right. So yeah, sort of it's how much the air will be heated up around the emission, I think. Um, so the next one is a big one. This is really important, this. Um, we've got these different styles. You get four of them. You've got smooth, fluffy, busy, and wispy. Um, so I've done a sort of test of all four of them. Let's open up, not that. Sorry, it's a browser. Um, where is it? It's here. So um, this is all the same sim, but just with those four different styles. And as you can see, you get a very different different result. Um, so that's a smooth. You can see that, that's like that. Quite good for things like cigarette smoke. Something a bit more, you know, wafty. And then you get these three, which are different. Um, you get fluffy, which has got quite nice, sort of more detail in it. And then this busy, which is uh, slightly more noisy, but at the same time more detail again. And I think wispy, which is maybe a bit of a mix of both of these two together. Um, and they are basically, what are they? They are... The spatial interpolation schemes used by the solver when transporting the fluid properties forward in time. Um, they're named for their visual characteristics. So it's different ways they can sort of calculate how this stuff moves through time. Um, and you get these very different results. So generally, unless you want to do something like cigarette smoke, you're going to want to change this to either fluffy or busy or something else or wispy. Um, I'm going to go for fluffy. Um, it's just see the difference and already you can see it's slightly more it's got different forms here they're sort of they're sort of rotating around a bit so you get already straight away a bit more um, interest in your smoke a bit more and this is what we're sort of generally always trying to aim for is more detail and more visual sort of interest in it. Um, let's let play while I talk about this. So the next one simulation speed we can increase how quickly the simulation goes. So if I rewind that back to 10 should go a lot quicker. There we go. And as you can see, it's changed the way it looks. Um, in fact, what we're getting now is because I've turned that speed up, we're actually getting artifacts. Um, it's not... It's jumping too many voxels per step. You're getting these weird, not very naturalistic looking emissions, um, which 
I put that sentence one. Um, which brings us on to the accuracy time steps, which we've seen before. This is how many times the uh, simulation will calculate per frame. The uh, enable enhanced accuracy is on by default. That's newish, actually. What does that do? If enabled, then the acceleration of the voxels with tractor improve the integration over time for more accurate simulations. This also adds two voxel properties, voxel velocity zero and acceleration. Mm. Um, so time step sizes. It says five works well for very detailed interaction with colliders. Values may need to be lowered one of them to increase the quality of the collider interactions. Um, so this time step size is the amount of voxels, which we remember from before are these fellas. Uh, I know it works, I deleted the BIF, so let me just delete that and reconnect it. So time step size, this is how many voxels it's allowed to travel before it's has to it's forced to recalculate it. So if something's going very very quickly, it does obviously jump through, that's what's happened before here. It was up here almost immediately, so it jumped through all that and it was going a bit weird, so you might have to crank those down actually, it's been less, wouldn't it? It'd be less voxels. So this would the number you actually take down to uh, accommodate the fact that you only wanted to calculate like like zero or one would be every voxel calculate 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 um, and then the ma maximum in steps is how many that's a time thing how many um, or is it a distance thing let's double check uh, min steps and then was the last min steps number something we've taken yeah every frame is a time one so it's how many so this one is how many this is like a distance one so it can travel through five voxels before it forces to calculate and this is a time one how many frames so minimum one per frame, maximum is three per frame. And if you crank that up, it will be a more finer simulation. Um, this final one is quite handy. This simulation bounds. Um, if you know that you don't really need to be calculating like a large area around this, um, you can make a box. Generally, it can be any sort of mesh shape, but the thing to realize about this is it only looks at the bounding box of the object. Um, if you don't know what bounding boxes are, they're sort of the, they're a box that encompasses the area of the object. So let's do a sphere just very quickly. So there's a sphere. If I scale them up and I go to attributes and display. That's the bounding box information. Let's just see it now. So, um, full bounding box. So that is basically what the bounding box is for that sphere. I'm going to get them both to show up. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just duplicate that one and put that to full. So you can see this is what the bounding box is. It's sort of the area that is contained by that mesh. So if you use this sphere as a simulation bound it would use this box, it wouldn't use the actual sphere, so that's something to be aware of. Um, let's get rid of that one, and let's make my cube. So what I could do is, if I knew I was only going to be sort of simulating in this area and no other bit, or I had a, say, a camera that I knew was only going to be here, or something like that, you do sort of need to make sure the back bit's being concealed by it. So it's like that. Everything up past here I don't really care about. And this is, you can bring this box in here. Sorry, it's very tiny now. Let's get rid of this guy. Um, and it's over here. Let's zoom out a bit, give you a bit more sense of it. Um, and you just connect that to that. So now nothing will, if I let that play, let me turn off this, this one. You don't need to see that scope anymore. Um, oops, and just to make it sort of more obvious very quickly, let's just do that.
So as you can see, the top of that box is cutting it out now, so it's not simulating anything above there. So that could be handy if you've got a very you know, precise camera view and you don't need to see it going out way up into the sky. Um, so that's the bounding box. Stop that. So I think that's it for settings. Um, Stop this and it lets me hit escape to stop. Um, sometimes it takes a while to stop this. You do have to hit escape on your keyboard a couple of times. Uh, right, so that's pretty much that done. Um, we do have some additional settings. Uh, these are probably a little bit more advanced than we need to look at, but you have um, some. These are optimizing settings that can sort of speed up your sims and keep the caches low. We can look at them maybe later on in the course if we get a bit more into it. Sharpening will add more detail and UVW lets you add travelling UVs and colour to them. Well, you can add colour to them anyway but it will let you add colour that will move with the smoke in different ways of colour. Um, I've not quite used that yet because it's new. Um, but anyway, they're all the sort of additional settings you can add to that which we'll talk about at another time. I don't want to get too bogged down. Right, so we've gone through the settings, we've got our basic sim, I'm just going to get rid of that cube now. Um, and the big sort of headline was I changed this to fluffy at the moment. Um, I didn't sort of talk about velocity smoothness, did I? Velocity smoothness I think is the new one isn't it? I oh, know it's not that one. Yeah. No, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, so it's just smoothing out the velocities, but it can overly smooth it, so you'll be careful with that one. Um, what was the other thing we missed out? Oh, obviously, the big one is our scene scale. So we've talked about that loads and everything else. This is where you control it here. So it's in meters, so one is a meter, 0.1 is 10 centimeters for a grid unit, and 0 0.01 will be. Uh, one centimeter. So now when I play that, I'll probably shoot that up. Does it? I think it's going to be quicker. Can't really work it out. Um, yep. Yeah, so that's your scene units where you do that. And the other one is a. Oops, not zero. Jesus, I'm going to crash that. Um, Kill voxel fog threshold. This is if the density of the fog, which is basically uh, fog density, this, if it drops below 0 0.001, it gets deleted. And that means it's sort of you don't have areas of very, very, very thin smoke that you can't even see in a render, but they're being simulated and calculated. It's a sort of threshold to kill very thin smoke that you can't see anymore. Right, so that's the. So what's that?